That's number two. Ms Lauder. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move the motion standing my name on the notice paper relating to planning for the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 mission. Question is the motion be agreed to. Ms Lauder. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Next year, 2019, is the 50th anniversary of what's often said to be the greatest technological achievement of humankind in the 20th century, if not of all time, the Apollo 11 lunar landing. For those who are old enough, the memory of watching those grainy black and white images of Neil Armstrong stepping down onto the surface of the moon was for many of us a powerful and defining moment of our lives. I remember I was at primary school in Queensland, in Brisbane, at that time, in the early stages of primary school, and in fact, television was new to Queensland at that time. And the school got in a television set especially for classes to sit around and watch the lunar landing. It was a very exciting moment on many fronts. And I think it's especially useful for us to be talking about this commemorative event, this important international as well as local international event during or uh, as we approach Heritage Week because it's also reflective of our heritage. Apollo 11 of course was the first spacecraft to land on the moon with people on board. The mission commander Neil Armstrong and pilot Buzz Aldrin, both from the USA, landed in the lunar module Eagle on July 20, 1969. And Neil Armstrong then became, became the first human to step onto the lunar surface six hours after landing on July 21. And Buzz Aldrin joined him about 20 minutes later. They spent about two and a quarter hours on the surface of the moon, outside of the spacecraft, and collected about 20 kilos of lunar material to bring back to Earth. And in fact, three pieces of the moon rock collected have been presented at various times to Australia. One is on display at the Tibimbilla Space Tracking Station, or its more formal title, Canberra Deep Space Communication Complex. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin spent just under a day on the moon's surface. And the third member of the Apollo 11 crew, Michael Collins, piloted the command module Columbia alone in lunar orbit while Armstrong and Aldrin were on the moon's surface. Apollo 11 was launched by a Saturn V rocket from Kennedy Space Center in Florida on July 16 and was the fifth manned mission of NASA's Apollo program. All of those three astronauts returned safely to Earth and landed in the Pacific Ocean on July 24. The landing was also broadcast on live TV to a worldwide audience. And those famous words, echo throughout the years since then when Neil Armstrong stepped down onto the surface of the moon and said, it's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. It's something that we've heard over and over in television broadcasts of the event since that time. Apollo 11 fulfilled a national goal proposed in 1961 by the then US President John F. Kennedy when he said, before this decade is out, landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to Earth. What many people know, but certainly not everyone, is that Australia, and the ACT in particular, played a vital part in the lunar, or the Apollo 11 mission. Contrary to the movie The Dish, which portrayed the Parkes radio telescope as receiving the signals from the moon landing. It was actually the Honeysuckle Creek station located just outside of Canberra that received the famous first footage from the moon. There was a 26 metre dish that was then located at Honeysuckle Creek. It was later moved to Tibimbilla Space Tracking Station and it's now decommissioned. And that was the very antenna which received and relayed to the entire world the historic first TV images of Neil Armstrong setting foot on the moon on 21 July 1969. And apart from the television footage they provided, Honeysuckle Creek and Tibimbilla Space Tracking Station had voice and telemetry contact with the lunar and command modules. The images that came from Honeysuckle Creek Tracking Station were sent direct to OTC Sydney via Williamsdale and Deakin 
The images were then selected by NASA for broadcast to the world. At the conclusion of the Apollo moon missions in 1972, Honeysuckle Creek began supporting regular Skylab passes, the Apollo scientific stations left on the moon by astronauts, and assisting the Deep Space Network with interplanetary tracking commitments. In 1974, at the conclusion of the Skylab program, Honeysuckle Creek joined the Deep Space Network as Deep Space Station 44, or DSS 44. Honeysuckle Creek closed in December 1981, and that was when the 26 metre antenna that had been used in the moon landings was relocated to the Canberra Deep Space Communication Complex at nearby Tibimbilla, and it was renamed Deep Space Station 46, or DSS 46, and it's remained in use there until late 2009. It's still located there at Tibimbilla. If you visit the tracking station, it's just immediately behind the public car park um, where you, you know, park when you want to go into the visitor centre. It's still very visible there, even though it's been decommissioned. In May 2010, the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics declared the antenna as an historical aerospace site. So the antenna will remain in place at the Canberra Deep Space Communication Complex in perpetuity as a historic site. Many of the people who worked at the space tracking station in the ACT during the lunar missions are still alive, and live, some of them still live in the ACT. And the upcoming 50th anniversary is a fitting and significant time to recognise and honour their contribution. I understand that an Apollo 11 50th anniversary committee has been established largely by ex-staff of the ACT tracking stations led by John Saxon, with support from Hamish Lindsay, Mike Din and others, all of whom worked at those tracking stations, or specifically Honeysuckle Creek, during the Apollo 11 mission. And the, my motion today recommends that this assembly appropriately prepares for the Apollo 11 50th anniversary next year to recognise the important part that ACT played in this global historic event. I know that this small committee of ex-staff is working on a range of ideas, many of which are already underway. Their ideas include possible sculpture, a movie, dinners, visits by astronauts and a walk of fame around the original Honeysuckle Creek dish. I'd also like to mention that it'd be good if the third moon rock in Australia was put on public display. There is one on display at the Tibimbilla Space Tracking Station Visitor Centre. There's one in Sydney at the Powerhouse Museum. But the third is not currently on public view. It's held by the National Archives. This moon rock was presented to Prime Minister Harold Holt at Old Parliament House in 1970 by the US Vice President Spira Agnew. And with appropriate security and other controls, it would be great if this moon rock could be put on public display. One of the important parts of my motion today is about installing a significant tribute and commemoration to the space tracking industry in the ACT through an artwork or similar in the ACT in time for the 50th anniversary. In my discussions with the organising committee of ex-staff of the tracking station, they've indicated that they would like this to be most likely in the city area, so that visitors to Canberra as well as locals could see it and understand the role that the ACT played in the space tracking industry. It may inspire future generations to participate in such technological advances. And I note that the ACT is already looking to further its participation in the space industry. This is a way of bringing new generation of science and technology people into the space tracking industry. It's something that we have a proud history of here in the ACT, back to when um, the then Prime Minister Robert Menzies instigated the space tracking industry in the ACT, recognising the technological advances that could be held here and the use of um, you know, higher education in the ACT and IT and other technological advances, a way to bring 
employment to the ACT that didn't involve manufacturing or other types of industry, but something that was very much knowledge-based. Knowledge and over the years, there have been hundreds, if not thousands, of people who've worked in the space tracking industry. There were previously three space tracking stations in the ACT. There was Honeysuckle Creek, Auroral Valley, and of course Tibimbilla. And Tibimbilla is the only one remaining that's still in operation. Tibimbilla is one of three tracking stations around the world. It's part of the Deep Space Network. The others being at Goldstone in California and one near Madrid in Spain. So between the three of them, any one of those tracking stations can receive signals and transmit signals to a spacecraft anywhere um, around our galaxy. So it's very important that you know, we continue to acknowledge the work of those people. To put not too fine a point in it, on it, 50 years since the moon landing means that some of those people who work there may not be around for too much longer. Many of them are in their 80s or older, and I think it's a fitting tribute to those staff, as well as the ACT's proud history in the space tracking industry, to provide support to these commemorative events and highlight to our citizens here in the ACT, to Australia as a whole, and to the world, our important part in this historic event. So the motion today recommends that this assembly and the ACT government appropriately prepare for the Apollo 11 at 50th anniversary next year. I seek the support of the assembly for this motion to celebrate the anniversary of Australia and the ACT's part in this historic Apollo 11 mission 50 years ago. Question.